Welcome to this Teaching with Quercus video brought to you by the Center for Teaching Support and Innovation. In this video, we will look at how you can administer a take-home exam using the Assignments tool in Quercus. In this video, we will highlight differences between assignments and quizzes in Quercus, review features of assignments that you can use to support a take-home exam, and provide information on how to access support for Quercus. When you're thinking of doing a take-home exam, your first thought might be to use the quizzes, given the name. However, the assignments tool might be better for your needs depending on how your exam is structured. Let's take a look at the differences and similarities between quizzes and assignments. Let's begin with the similarities. Assignments and quizzes are both means of accepting work from your students that you can assess and evaluate. For both of them, you can manage deadlines by setting a due date and deadline. You can also allow extra time for students with accommodations. You can use a tool called the Speed Grader to evaluate student submissions. Another thing to note is that grades from assignments and quizzes will appear in your gradebook in Quercus. Just remember that you should not make final grades available to students through Quercus. Official final grades are to be posted on ACORN. Now let's dive into some of the key differences. The primary reason why you might use quizzes would be to use its auto grading feature. For question types such as multiple choice questions and fill in the blanks, Quercus can automatically grade these questions based on a correct answer that you input. Quizzes offer a large variety of question types, including auto gradable question types like multiple choice, true, false, and fill in the blank. But there are also a variety of questions that need to be graded manually, such as essay questions and file upload questions. However, if you would like students to upload a file, we recommend using assignments instead of quizzes. Quizzes also offer the ability to randomize questions and answer options. After students take the quiz, you'll have access to detailed reports and statistics about your questions and student performance. As previously mentioned, if you'd like students to upload a file, it's better to use the Assignments tool. There are multiple submission options available in Assignments. The assignment type you're most likely to use for a take-home exam would be online. Within the online submission types, you can allow students to enter text, for example if students are submitting a journal entry. You can also ask students to submit a website URL, for example if they're submitting a link to their online portfolio. A third option is media recordings, which allows students to record audio and video. Lastly, you can allow file uploads. For example, you can ask students to submit files such as Word, PowerPoint, Excel, or PDF files, or other option. In this video, we'll focus on how file uploads and assignments can be used for take-home exams. Even though we saw earlier that the file upload is a question type in quizzes, we recommend using assignments instead of quizzes because the files will be easier for you to access and evaluate. You can also use assignments to manage accepting group work. For more information about this, visit the Quercus support resources. You can also enable Turnitin with Assignments, which is a tool that assists with detecting textual similarities between compared works. For more information, you can also visit the Quercus support resources. Another option available through Assignments is the ability to do blind grading for student submissions. Now let's imagine we're offering a take-home exam in which students need to respond to three short essay questions in a three-hour window, and we want them to upload a Word document with their response. Let's jump to Quercus and see how we can set this up. To get started, click on Assignments in your course navigation menu. Then click on the plus Assignment button. This is the assignment creation page. Here, I'm going to give the assignment a name I'm going to call this one Take Home Exam. In this box, enter detailed assignment instructions. Here, I'm going to enter the three prompts that students need to respond to for this take home exam. In this box, you can also include information such as suggested time per question, word limits, formatting requirements, authorized aids, and a reminder about academic integrity. If you keep scrolling down, you can enter the points that the assignment is worth. For this example, I'm going to set the point value to 30 or 10 points per question. This will obviously vary depending on your evaluation scheme. You can add this assignment to an assignment group to manage the calculation of the final grade in your gradebook. You can display the grades as points. We suggest displaying it as points rather than using letter grades. 
For submission type, we will keep this as online, but we will select the online entry option as a file upload. You have the option to restrict file upload types. Here, I will enter doc and docx. Do not include the period before the file extension. Here, next to plagiarism review, you have the option to enable Turnitin. For more information about Turnitin, visit the Quercus support resources. At the very bottom of the page, you can manage the take-home exam availability. The available from date will be when the assignment becomes available to students. Before the available from date, students will see that an assignment will be taking place, but they will not be able to view the instructions or submit any work. You can then assign a due date. Note that students will be able to submit after the due date. If you would like to lock the assignment, enter a hard deadline in the until date field. In this example, I will set my assignment to be available on April 4th at 3 p.m. and due at 6 p.m. If you have a student who requires extra time, click on the plus add button. Here, I'm going to assign my fake student, Lisa Oak, an extra hour because of a documented accommodation. She will have until April 4th at 7 p.m. When you're done, click on Save and Publish. This is the screen you'll see when your assignment is now ready. The last thing you'll want to do is verify that the assignment is available for students to see. If I click on the student view here, I can then see what my class looks like as a student, and I can click on the assignments link. I will see that there's a take-home exam, but it's not available until April 4th, so that's following the settings that I input. Here I will see that the assignment is locked until after April 4th at 3 p.m. I'm now going to exit the student view, and now we'll show you how to assess student submissions once they're submitted. Now that we've given time for students to submit their take-home exam, it's time to evaluate their work. Before doing so, we will make sure that grades are not visible to students while we're grading. Click on Grades in the course navigation menu, and select the three dots next to the column for your take-home exam. Click on the grade posting policy and make sure that it's set to manual. This means that grades will be hidden from students while you're evaluating them. Click on save and now we'll return to the course and go to the assignments. Click on assignments in your course navigation menu, select your take home exam, and then click on the speed grader. This will open up a new tab where you can see your student's submission and you can provide feedback using the built-in tools such as comments, uh, markup, and highlighting. Once you've read through the submission and left feedback, you can enter a score. You can add comments. And just make sure to click on submit when you're done. Because we muted the assignment in the gradebook, the student will not have access to the grade until you're ready to make it available. I'm going to close out of the speed grader and I'm going to go return to the gradebook here, and we'll see that the grade successfully transferred here. For assistance with Quercus, you can visit the documentation at the Quercus support resources at uofte.me slash qresources. You're also welcome to contact your divisional support team for assistance at uofte.me slash qsupportcontacts. And for any additional assistance, email uh, the Quercus support team at q.help at utoronto.ca. Thank you.